the Colts just absolutely just destroyed the Jets last night, Thursday Night Football, to open up week nine. And Mike White gets hurt, you know, so you don't even get to enjoy a little bit of that. Like, that's bad. Then Marcus May gets hurt. So just from a Jet perspective, this was brutal. From a Colts perspective, boy, they really needed this. And I tip my cap to Frank Reich because they probably could have just run that thing up to 70 if they really wanted to, yeah. and they didn't. They got, mad, they got mad when it just like, oh, y'all still trying to win? Oh, we're going to air it out then, too, then we <laughs> – Yeah, right. But still, it, it's I, – I have to say, though, for me, it's amazing to listen to you break down defense. And what you said about what you saw last night, how the Colts did whatever they wanted, and although – Carson Wentz's numbers were impressive. He had – it really was nothing more – Nothing That yeah. running game – Yeah, nothing to do that with it. That was a game where the Colts showed the league we can dominate the line of scrimmage. And that's kind of been their DNA for years, right? Yeah. They've always had that big front line on defense and obviously offensive line has been a big part of it. But they ran all over the Jets. And you went into on the postgame show and – and I'm doing this for everybody because I want you to understand that it's not really a Jet thing. This is a Bart Scott thing and it's also an NFL thing. I said to myself, listening to you explain what the Jets were, what the Jets did wrong, and what they should have done, and how the adjustment could have been made in game for what the Colts were doing. And I said to myself, "You remember the movie um, Good Will Hunting?" Yeah. There's a scene in the movie where Ben Affleck says to Matt Damon, "They're at the construction site." He picks him up at his house every morning. They go to the construction site, and he knows that Matt Damon is brilliant. And he says to him, "I every day I pull up at your house, and I hope." You're not there because you shouldn't be coming to work with me. You should be somewhere else doing bigger and better things. And I, ha- I thought that moment, that scene came to mind for me as I'm listening to <laughs> you. Like ben. Stop it. <laughs> when you, just listening to you break down, I'm thinking, Bart Scott doesn't need to be sitting across from me on radio. He needs to be on a sideline with a Microsoft Surface in his hand explaining to a bunch of young linebackers, hey, this is what you should be doing right now. Just do this. Because the way you explained it was it made it sound so simple, but yet it looked so complicated for the Jets. Well, Why does that happen in the NFL? Why is it you can see it without even watching film back, but in game, they can't see it? Well, it's to a certain point, like I expect maybe CJ to see it, but it really falls on the defensive coordinator to see it. Because what happens is when you're in the fire and it's hot, all you worried about is not burning. Right, and so what happens is you're trying to escape, and what you saw the Jets do is the path of least resistance. You know, conceptually, you have to understand what what are conceptually what are they trying to do to you, and what they did and recognize is the fact that the Jets had a personnel that in a defensive call that was predicated on close calls and strength calls. So what did they do? They mess with the strength. So they take the tight end off, or they send a motion. And it makes guys have to run. And what happens is what's simple, if you're sitting there looking at it, becomes complicated because you're not looking at it. So you're looking at it once the ball is, 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 is hiked and it looks like a Chinese fire drill, <laughs> right? And that's really what it was. And when that happens, you have to say, okay, listen, they're dictating to us the rules of engagement. Let us take that back. Let us go with a defense that doesn't matter. You can close it to the field. Like, it doesn't matter. Usually people, what I'm trying to get people to understand is close call usually goes to the tight end. That means it's a strength, right? Okay. Because you have one more lineman on that side to the tight end because you only have a tackle on the other side. So that's the strength of the formation. So you try and put all your people over there. But what happens is they take the tight end off, then you say, okay, alert, shift, or motion. Mm-hmm. He goes to the other side. So now your lineman that's in a certain front here, say if they're in a, a certain gap here, that gap goes to the other side, so you have to shift. So what they would do is they would go yo-yo with him back and forth and had guys run around like crazy. Yeah. And, like, what you have to do when you have a big guy like Jonathan Taylor, and listen, it was clear that they were outmatched. Quentin Williams almost one time, I thought he, he was going on a kickoff or something. He was doing kickoff return. That's how far they pushed him back when – uh, Quentin Williams, I mean, Quentin uh, Nelson in the center, you know, double teamed him, right? Which basically blocked C.J. Mosley, which made him have to take a bad angle, and he got trucked. What you do is you just cancel the gaps. Like, if if you can't beat him, and Brian Bell, you say this all the time, if you can't long stick him, then trick duck him. You guys will figure it out, right? Mm, I know what you're saying there, so, yeah. So what it's saying is, like, listen, you can't man for man, they are better than you. So you put them on the move. You slant people. Use your strength. Your strength is your athletic. Yeah. If they're big and strong, you're fast and agile. Be big and agile, and make them hit moving targets, and move the move 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 your 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 entry level, and let the linebackers know. Okay, listen, everything's gonna bounce, 
at least if you're going to die, die one way. Don't die with getting hit with a hook, a jab, an uppercut, a kick, a DDT, a <laughs> suplex. Like, man, if you hit me, you're going to hit me with the left hook. I mean, the, J- the Jets were, were wholly embarrassed only a couple of weeks ago against the Patriots. This and, was worse. And this was this, even this, worse, this was worse on national TV. You want to know why this was worse? 200, you mean 260 yards rushing worse? Yeah. Is that why? Because you, it's, you it's, literally got manhandled? It's, yeah, it's worse because one thing to be out-schemed and tricked like uh, Bill Belichick did, right? Screens and catching guys inexperienced. One thing for somebody to say, I'm running right here, right here, and it's nothing, nothing you can do about you it. Can do. That is the most hopeless feeling. Yeah. And that's why you saw guys jumping out of gaps, trying to run behind gaps because it was hot in there. And guys, listen, that might be a highlight tape for their, for their year yearbook. Oh, for Jonathan Taylor. I mean, 172 yards on 19 carries. I mean, he's averaging nine yards. I mean, he just – and, and, I mean, you're talking about they're, they're creating just absolute wide – Canyons. Yeah. You know, they say, "Oh, oh, he ran through the hole." That that's a canyon. So, what, what happened in that game? I mean, just like, like so. So that's you another, know another thing schematically where they jacked up. Okay. If you, if you if you got they run a four three, so if you got four guys on the line, they have six if they have a tight end, right? Mm-hmm. That's six people. That's mm-hmm. six against mm-hmm. four. Yeah. So that's yeah. damn near a double right. double. Right. Let the backside guy go because we're not running that way anyway. Yeah. If you can't if you can't handle that, go to a sink front. Which makes it a a a, a three four a, a three four, you know what I mean? So now you saw them do it, but it took them a whole damn half to sink down and say, "Listen, if we're gonna lose. We're gonna put it on our corners because we need more reinforcements." And they went to a sink front and they had better success. But why does it take a whole half? Like, what is your eyeballs missing? That's why I asked that question as I'm watching: is if Bar can figure this out, how it's not being figured out on the sideline? And you know, as bad as Adam Gase was from the offensive perspective for the Jets. Robert Sala, who's known for his defense, who had some great defenses while he was with the 49ers, his defenses this year have looked absolutely terrible. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.